Okay, hey, we're going to look at the growth rings on this ash tree we just cut. We've uh, been working it up. There's one piece over there took off like one of Fred Flintstone's wheels. Anyway, there's there's our stump back here. Yeah, and there's the top. We've got some of it moved out already. But uh, anyway, first thing, wanted to look at the chips. You know, <laughs> we always get these commenters say, sharpen your saw, sharpen your saw. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later in this video. But uh, if your saw is not throwing chips, you know, you got to stop. <laughs> if you're not throwing chips like that, you know, you stop cutting because you're not cutting if it's throwing dust. So anyway, it's, I get kind of a kick out of that. The people who comment like that, if you look at their channel, they usually are gamers or they don't have anything at all so it's kind of amusing but uh, anyway so let's take a look at this we're gonna let's see I'm gonna move this over a little bit here try to get this thing steady yeah, let's see about how old this tree is. It's probably about 80, I'm guessing, but we'll see. So, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Some of these are hard to see. So there's seven, eight, nine. There's a big one, ten. There's ten years. And this is, this is the bottom looking up into the tree here, so... This is just above the stump. And yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna count more here. And ash will grow fast. Let me see. There's 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. They will grow fast. This is what they call a ring porous wood. In the springtime, it makes uh, a ring of large pores. So they're fairly easy to count. Okay, we'll count another 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's 30 years. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. That's forty years. Let me see. There we go. Get the whole thing in there. Yeah, so there's ten, twenty, thirty, forty. Up here there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's fifty years. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's sixty years. One, two, three, four, five, seven, about eight. It's about sixty-eight years there. So, and you got to add a little bit for the bottom, which is not showing. So we're looking at a tree that's a little bit over 70 years old. So pretty impressive. If we measure across the stump. Measure across the stump here. We're right at two feet inside the bark. So anyway, if you're gonna count tree rings, ash, hickory, oak, those are easy to count because you get you get those uh, you get those large pores right there that separate those years really well. If you're having trouble uh, counting those rings, you can sand it and put a little water on it, and they'll show up. And you can see the wavy you can see wavy lines in the summer wood. Uh, that'll throw you if you're not used to looking at, at these rings, but. 
but you look for your look for your big big wood and big pores in the spring that's where you count that's the beginning of each year and then you go into the summer wood it's more dense anyway so six i counted 68 rings you figure it probably took you know a few years to get up to that point that's where we started counting so it's uh, you know between 70 and 80 years and boy that's a big big honking chunks of wood uh, the way I deal with these is we use the loader on the tractor bring the loader up here roll them into the loader get several of them in you know three or four of them in the loader drive it up to the uh, log splitter roll it off of the bucket into the uh, onto the log splitter and then I can then I can bust them up so you know I don't try to pick up stuff like that too much for an old guy like me so anyway <laughs> we'll go into the next part of this video I'll be talking about keeping your chain your chain sharp and you know if, if you're cutting wood you want to be making chips if it's not throwing chips you need to stop of course now in a video and you're looking at that and that's thrown out of a saw it looks like dust but you know I'm looking down and I'm seeing the chips if I'm not throwing chips I stop because I've touched something and got it screwed up and the other day it was interesting the other day when I was uh, when we were cutting this down yeah I, I put my uh, I put my one wedge in here to steady it and it, this this cedar tree was in the way so I, I didn't have enough room there when I when I ran the saw through it uh, it tagged that and you can see the orange chips there where I hit that and that dulled one side of that blade just a little bit and you can see you can see where that, that curves off I noticed that one so as soon as I started cutting that thing was curving that thing was curving down and just touching that plastic wedge dulled one side of that that uh, chain a little bit and uh, i knew it immediately but i just had a few inches to go to get out and it was it was cutting through it okay but i could see immediately it wasn't cutting just right and uh, so anyway so the next day i i looked at that chain and some of the points on the on the chisels were were dubbed off just a little bit on one side of that chain and I went around it once with a file and got her right back in shape again but uh, pay attention to your chain you've got to have her cutting right you can see see how that slopes off and that was from touching that wedge it's all it takes is one little touch or hitting a rock or getting in the dirt those things will all mess it up and when it when it's not cutting right you know just stop and file it get it right back in shape again and Another thing you look at is how thick should your hinge be, and you know that's a big topic. Well, anyway, we were talking about uh, the hinge here. Uh, you know, your hinge they tell us you know should be up to 10% of the thick of the diameter of the tree. So a 20-inch tree, you know, you might make a hinge as much as two inches thick. Although that's getting pretty thick, this is one and three quarters. Well, at some point, you know, your hinge is going to be thick enough that it won't want to bend, and you'll split your tree. And so, I get to a really big tree. You know, if you've got a 30-inch tree, I might not want a three-inch hinge that might not bend. So what I'll do is I'll make it two, and I'll set a I'll set a wedge on either end to support the weight of the tree in case the hinge doesn't want to support it. And that way, I know I'm not going to split the tree. But you can see here, the you can't just keep bending a piece of wood if it's too thick. And, you know, the front end of the thing bends, but your back end of the hinge, you see, instead of bending, it pulled fibers. So, you know, one and three quarters inch on ash, and I'm pulling fibers out of the back of that hinge. So, one and three quarters is okay, but you might stop an inch and a half. And if your tree is really big, uh, stay stay about here. But then maybe put a put a wedge out on either end to support it. But uh, that's interesting. If you can look at 
and every every wood is different you know look at cherry look at hickory hickory is real strong you don't need a very thick hinge on hickory uh, if you got punky black oak you better have plenty of wood there to hold it so but uh, kind of study your hinge and see what it's doing it'll tell you what you need to do and this tells me I could probably go to an inch and a half hinge on ash tree and I'd be okay and then I wouldn't get this fiber pull on the back end of the hinge anyway it's all very interesting you try to learn a little bit off every stump anyway catch you later we're gonna look at chain here and just as soon as I get out of this section bye bye <clears throat> I saw a question on the internet the other day somebody wanted to know why are their chain stretched on their saw or what they could do about it something about how come their chain stretched and uh, I would tell them that chain doesn't stretch on your saw it might get loose but uh, this saw I uh, just ran a full tank of gas through this saw I had the chain adjusted up snug see it's just barely falling off not you could run that one yet and uh, I was bucking up an ash tree and making some cuts that were longer than the bar had to go from both sides and running it hard and when I got done it's still you know it's, you could run that yet um, if you're getting excessive sag you're not keeping your saw sharp and I, I like to sharpen every time but uh, when your uh, when your uh, saw is dull you're pushing it hard and you're throwing extra wear into your rivets. So we'll zoom in here. Oops. Anyway, if, if you don't keep her sharp, if you don't keep it sharp, you know, you're putting wear in these spots right here, your rivets and links wear, and then, then you get excessive sag. So the main thing is, you know, keep it sharp. And if you don't know how to sharpen your, uh, teeth on your saw there are lots of good videos on the on YouTube about it uh, I sharpen with a round file you want to have that about 25 to 35 degrees and there's usually a line on here it shows you uh, it should be pressed back into the gullet and if you draw a line across the let me see if you draw a line across the uh, face of that gullet it should come up at 90 degrees to this top plate or you make make a 90 degree and you'll see you'll see that arc should be so it's even about like that and uh, if you're filing that right your your uh, file is just a little bit above the top of that top plate and you want to have if you have a full chisel chain you got to file it till you get a nice point on the end if you got a round if you got a semi chisel chain of course it's going to be slightly rounded they don't cut quite as fast but they'll cut with a little bit of wear on them too so anyway so when you're filing you know you need to put pressure back into that gullet this needs to run through here just on a very straight line don't let it wobble or come up and down you gotta wobble that or don't let it wobble and uh, what you're looking for on these teeth is uh, I gotta see my viewfinder there we go on these teeth point them into the Sun if you can see a bright edge on that it's dull that top plate should just disappear when you shine that it point that into the Sun this top plate if it's sharp will just d seem to disappear if it's got a bright edge it means that it's dull because when it has a bright edge it means it's curved over on top and it won't cut right so you put pressure back in there push it right straight through and every several filings you should get out your gauge and check the height of your depth gauges there and uh, you don't want to you don't want to over file those you want to have them you know cut you want to got them cut them down so they pull a good chip but if you cut them down too much then the saw gets grabby you don't want to do that and uh, anyway so keep it sharp and you want to use the right oil if you use uh, if you don't use bar oil uh, you'll wear those too bar oil has 
stuff in it that makes it real tacky so it hangs on so you want to use the right oil and and taking care of your bar like this this bar uh, has a spot to grease so you want to grease that it doesn't take much one pump will make it come out yeah. one pump and you can see the grease come out there that wasn't even a full pump and uh, the other thing is when you're doing these let's turn this around back this out again there we go let's pop this side plate off of there Anyway, loosen that, loosen your adjuster, and then run these out. This, this is a 550, with this one the, uh, the nuts stay caged on there so I don't lose them in the woods, that's nice. Anyway, anyway when you look at... Uh, Look at your clutch here. Something that gets neglected on homeowner saws is it's got a throw out bearing. And on Husqvarna saws, yeah, the end of the crankshaft is drilled so you can grease that bearing. Doesn't take much, just give it a little bit. Uh, you can kind of look in there and you'll see grease start to come out around the back of that. Anyway, just a little shot of grease. There we go. A little shot of grease and you can you can feel the bearing feels different after you put a little grease in it. You should do that for your saw. And put this back on. We'll flip that bar later. I'm gonna be I've got to go right back to cutting, but I thought we'd look at how much that loosened. It didn't loosen much on one tank of fuel. And uh, I tend to sharpen my saw every time I gas up. Okay. Now we're gonna be handling the chain. So when you handle the chain, you put your gloves on. Anyway, so we can see the chain hanging down it on the end and you turn your adjuster until that chain comes up and touches the bar touches the bar that's set just about right and tighten on pull it yeah that feels good it rotates easily came up touch the bar it rotates easily and you get a longer bar you got to be a little more careful because you can get a lot of drag there before you know it. But if you're running a bar like most of most people do for home or ranch cutting, you know, it's, uh, you just bring you tighten it, you turn that adjuster until it comes up and tags. And so I've got that greased on both ends, got it adjusted, and now I'm ready to sharpen. And after I sharpen, then I'll top up my fuel and oil, and I'm ready to go back out and cut again. So, if you don't know how to sharpen, look up some videos. It's really, you know, I've been sharpening my own saws for years and years and years. And, I, they, you know, I don't really think too much about it, but I just do it on the, on the ground or on a stump or on the tailgate. 
and uh, use a use a handle that way you get a full stroke and you're not putting the tang of that file through your hand so um, and whenever you're handling the chain have on your gloves you know it's uh, it's pretty simple those this thing these things you know, file makes them razor sharp so you always want to have leather on your hands so anyway thank you for watching and we'll catch you later